Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In previous videos, we talked about Clostridia. Today, we'll talk about Nocardia, the branching filamentous weakly acid fast organism that can lead to lung abscess, brain abscess, skin abscess, all kinds of suppurative infections, and much more. With that said, now let's get started. True story, mind you, a patient had hepatitis C virus. After years and years and years, he developed cirrhosis of the liver. Since his liver is now toast, he went for a liver transplant. To protect him from attacking the new liver, because the new liver is foreign to his body, immunologically speaking, the doctors prescribed immunosuppressants. As you know, immunosuppressants tend to, guess what, suppress immunity. So he developed fever and some leg pain. Ultrasound of that lower leg showed abscess in the soleus muscle. What in the world? Then he started seizing and convulsing vigorously. It was so bad, it left permanent sequelae, namely hemiplegia. So they did a CT scan of the brain, only to find three distinct brain lesions. What in the world is going on? Physicians prescribed antibiotics for him, and after a 55-day course of antibiotics, he finally started to improve and was successfully discharged from the hospital. What's the diagnosis, please? This is Nocardia. Have you ever wondered why we call it Nocardia? It's named after the French scientist who discovered it, Edmond Nocard. Look at all of that branching action. Since the branchings of Nocardia resemble the hyphae of fungi, believe it or not, Nocardia was historically classified as a fungus. Did you know that, Cody? For maximum understanding and retention, please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Nocardia is supposedly gram-positive rod, spore-forming? No. Aerobic? Yeah, it is aerobic. Motile? No, it's immotile. There are some good rules in microbiology. If a bacteria has short-chain mycolic acid, it will be not acid-fast. Case in point, Corini bacteria. But if the bacterium has medium-chain mycolic acid, like Nocardia, it will be weakly acid-fast. But if, like mycobacteria, you have long-chain mycolic acid, you will be strongly acid-fast, fully, completely acid-fast. The word fast here means resistant. Resistant to what? resistant to decolorization by acid solutions. So here is Corine bacteria versus Nocardia versus Mycobacteria. Pause and review. The length of the chain of mycolic acid determines the acid fastness. Nocardia is aerobic. Nocardia is weakly acid fast. Nocardia is supposedly gram positive but does not stain well with gram. Rod, non-spore forming, branching with thin filaments that look like the hyphae of a fungus. Fungus is myco. The study of fungi is fungology or mycology, hence mycolic acid. Nocardia, strictly aerobic, abundant in the organic soil. The filaments look like the hyphae of a fungus, that's why we call it mycolic acid, that's why we call it mycetoma, even though nocardia is not a fungus. Gram stain, not very helpful, but the modified acid fast stain is very helpful. Add a weak HCl or hydrochloric acid solution to the bacteria. Will the bacteria be decolorized? The answer is no, because this is acid fast, i.e. resistant to the acid, i.e. it's going to resist the decolorization after you add the acid. Now here is something unique to Nocardia. Being weakly acid fast plus the so-called hyphae, i.e. the thin filaments, are up in the air. What do you mean? Protruding upwards above the surface of the colonies. Here's the petri dish, here's the level of the bacterial colonies, but Nocardia is ascending up in the air. We call this aerial hyphae. So whenever you see aerial hyphae and weakly acid fast organism, you can bet the rent money that this is nocardia. But hey, medicosis, which type of nocardia? 
What's the species then? For this, you will need some genomic sequencing. Coriny bacteria, short chain mycolic acid. What do you mean by short chain? 22 to 36 carbons. Not acid fast because this is not long enough. And since it's not acid fast, it's not acid resistant, i.e. it does not resist decolorization. It will be decolorized when you add acid to it. Nocardia is kind of in the middle, medium chain, therefore weakly acid fast. How about the mycobacteria? Very long chain mycolic acid, many carbon atoms, strongly acid fast. Whether you add a weak acid or a strong acid, we don't care. You cannot take this away from me, said the mycobacteria. Nocardia was supposed to be gram-positive, non-spore-forming, immotile, aerobic, branching, beaded, and urease-positive, ubiquitous in the soil, acid-fast, although weakly or partially. Signs and symptoms include lung cavities, lung abscesses, brain abscesses, kidney abscesses, skin abscesses, mycetoma, and if you are immunocompromised, you are at a higher risk, especially for severe or disseminated nocardiasis. Hey, medicosis, can I prevent nocardiasis? Unfortunately not, because nocardia is everywhere around you. How can we treat it? TMP, SMX, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. Now let's dig deeper into the organic soil where nocardia lives and is abundant and ubiquitous. Nocardia is strictly aerobic, thin filaments that look like the hyphae of a fungus. These filaments are branching. Gram stain doesn't work well. Modified acid fast stain will work. What do you mean? I need a weak acid like weak hydrochloric acid solution. By the way, nocardia will not be decolorized by the weak HCl. This is the definition of being acid fast, i.e. acid resistant. I'm resistant to weak acids like a weak hydrochloric acid solution. Let's talk about the cell wall of the bacteria. It has branched chain fatty acids and it has trihalose 6 and 6 prime dimycolate. Goodness gracious. Let's start with the branched chain fatty acid. It's present in two forms in the nocardia. Number one is the mesodep, which stands for mesodiaminopimelic acid, a fatty acid, mind you. The word meso means middle, like the mesencephalon, which is the midbrain or the middle brain. I've told you five minutes ago that nocardia has medium chain mycolic acid. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Next, in the cell wall, there is trihalo 6 and 6 prime dimycolate, also known as the code factor. Please remember this because it will be repeated with mycobacterium tuberculosis. Let's remember this. Code factor is a virulence factor. How virulent is it? Very virulent. How come? It boosts the intracellular survival of nocardia. It helps nocardia survive inside your cell. How come? It inhibits the fusion of your phagosome with your lysosome, and that's why you will be unable to kill nocardia. Think of it as nocardia wrapping its cord around your butt. I mean, around your phagosome and lysosome, preventing their fusion, so to speak. So let's talk about some virulence factors that nocardia possesses. We have the phagocyte evasion, thanks to the cord factor and other factors. We have catalase and superoxide dismutase enzymes, which will destroy your hydrogen peroxide and your superoxide, respectively, rendering your weapons ineffective. Also, nocardia has some toxins and hemolysin, whose clinical significance is not fully appreciated yet. For the gazillionth time, when you see aerial hyphae and a weakly acid fast organism, this is nocardia. Nothing else has these two properties, respectively. Nocardia can grow on buffered charcoal yeast extract, or BCYE, although nocardia is very slow. Slow in growing in culture, slow course of the disease, nocardiosis, and slow recovery from that disease. If you have a granulocyte defect, or a monocyte defect, or a T-cell deficiency, you are at a higher risk of nocardiosis. What do you mean by T-cell deficiency? It could be congenital immunodeficiency, 
could be acquired immunodeficiency like HIV infection, could be chronic uncontrolled diabetes, could be any patient taking immunosuppressants such as steroids, such as cyclosporin. In cases of patients who are recipients to organ transplant, patients on chemotherapy for cancer treatment, etc., etc., etc. Let me say something about the fact that nocardia is slowly growing in culture. Most bacteria take about two days to grow in culture. However, nocardia can take up to a week just to appear on the petri dish. Therefore, you need to inform the lab and tell them specifically that you are looking for nocardia and that they should wait until nocardia grows. Keep the incubation for up to a week. Do not expect other people in the hospital to read your mind. You need to say something. Stand up for yourself and for your patients. And when the patient asks you, Hey doctor, what happened to the sample that you took? You told me that you were doing culture or some stuff. It has been six days and I have no results. I've paid some money here. Well, my friend, even if you were a multi gazillionaire I cannot force Nocardia to grow faster. Nocardia is notoriously slow. Sorry, we have to wait. This is not Amazon Prime service. This is a weekly acid fast organism. How did Nocardia get access to my body via inhalation and followed by aspiration or traumatic introduction into your skin and subcutaneous tissue? Diseases, don't forget, are asymptomatic patients. Some patients have Nocardia while showing no symptoms whatsoever. Disease-wise, we have bronchopulmonary. Could be pneumonia, could be bronchitis, could be cavitary lung disease like lung abscess. The affliction of the pleura is common such as empyema, brain abscess, check, meningitis, check, encephalitis, check. An abscess is a collection of pus in your brain. Meningitis is inflammation of the meninges, the coverings around your brain. Encephalitis is inflammation of the brain substance itself. Can someone help me by defining cerebritis? And how is cerebritis different from encephalitis? Let me know the answer in the comment section. Skin infections can happen, including cellulitis, mycetomas, lymphocutaneous infections with nodules that ulcerate, opportunistic infections, etc. Let's have some biochemistry review. Do you remember your electron transport chain in your mitochondria? Yeah, there was plenty of oxygen there. See that oxygen? Yeah. In the electron transport chain? Yeah. If you add one electron to that oxygen, the oxygen will become negative superoxide, as you see here. Add another electron and you have hydrogen peroxide. Add a third electron and you have hydroxyl free radical. Add a fourth one and you have water. These are harmful to the bacteria. Water is harmless. So how do we punch the bacteria in the guts? Take your oxygen and make it the toxic superoxide. And even the more toxic hydrogen peroxide and hypochlorite, which is bleach, and destroy the bacteria. How do I go from oxygen to superoxide in ADPH oxidase? How can I go from superoxide to hydrogen peroxide? Superoxide dismutase. How do I take that hydrogen peroxide and convert it into hypochlorite? By myeloperoxidase. This is why when you're sick, your sputum gets green, thanks to the presence of myeloperoxidase in your neutrophils. It's a peroxidation reaction. All of this is known as the oxidative or respiratory burst. You're breathing your flames onto the bacteria. Like a dragon in the methods of the archetypes. You know, life is suffering, man. It's not simple. It's not. Now, nocardia is snaky. This is how nocardia is gonna evade your immune system. See your toxic hydrogen peroxide? Nocardia will break it apart. How come? Nocardia is catalase positive. You see that superoxide? Yeah. Nocardia will break it apart via superoxide dismutase. Take it and make it into hydrogen peroxide and then break that hydrogen peroxide by catalase from the harmful to the harmless oxygen and water. Hashtag evasion of your immune system. You know who's gonna suffer the most? A patient with chronic granulomatous disease who is deficient in NADPH oxidase. They're having less superoxide dismutase 
than other people, therefore they're having less hydrogen peroxide. Even that tiny amount of hydrogen peroxide, nocardia will break down into harmless oxygen and water. Tell me about the virulence factors of nocardia. We have the cord factor which inhibits the fusion of phagosome with lysosome. Nocardia will inhibit the acidification of the phagosome, rendering it less effective. Nocardia will inhibit the acid phosphatase that you have. Therefore, you will be unable to use that acid phosphatase to kill the bacteria. How come? Nocardia took your acid phosphatase and used it for another purpose. The other purpose is as a carbon source. Therefore, it's diverting your resources away from bacterial killing. Nocardia has superoxide dismutase to convert your superoxide to something else, namely hydrogen peroxide, and it has catalase to take that hydrogen peroxide and break it down to harmless oxygen and water. Diseases caused by nocardia are listed here again in a bigger handwriting. What's a mycetoma? Mycetoma literally means oma is a mess, mycy from mycology fungus, a fungus bowl or a fungus mass. That's because nocardia was previously classified as a fungus, but now it's a bacteria, but the bad name still remains. Mycetoma is a chronic infection. It is painless, affects the skin, go deeper, subcutaneous tissue deeper, muscle, deeper, even bone, pus formation and suppurative granulomas and formation of multiple sinus tracts. Very important. How can we diagnose nocardia? Microscopy and use the acid fast stain. You'll have weekly acid fast organism. Don't forget that the hyphae are up in the air, thin, filamentous, branched, and rising above the surface of the colony. When you see the aerial hyphae plus weekly acid fast, this is nocardia. Take it to the bank. Now you know the genus. How can you determine the species? For this, you need some genomic analysis. Let's culture nocardia. Don't forget it's very slow. You can use non-selective media or selective media like BCYE, buffered charcoal yeast extract. This is the same medium used to isolate Legionella, which we'll discuss in a later video. So if you have a respiratory infection, the same medium will pick up Legionella and Nocardia. Don't forget that Nocardia is notoriously slow, can take up to a week. Protein analysis VMS spectrometry may be the future of diagnosis of nocardiosis. Treatment-wise, by the way, it can take up to a year of antibiotic treatment in order to get rid of nocardia. Remember my patient who recovered after 55 days. Let's go. If you have a wound, proper wound care is important. Skin infection, are you immunocompetent? TMPSMX. Immunocompromised? TMPSMX plus amicacin. What if it's a severe or disseminated nocardiosis, like started in the lungs and then went to the brain, which can happen, or starts in the lungs and goes to the skin, which is common. If we're talking lung and skin disease, TMP SMX plus amicacin. If you're talking neurological symptoms and brain disease, TMP SMX plus amipenem or TMP SMX plus acephalosporin. Let's review nocardia or the note card from Picmonic. Let's go. Aerobic. Aerobic exercises. Gram positive. Here's the angel. Catalase positive. Positive cat. Urease positive. Positive U. Eraser. Acid fast. Look at the lemon. The acid running real fast. Please remember this shape because it will be very helpful with tuberculosis. The tubercle bacillus appears as pink on a blue background. Nocardia is branching like the branches of a tree. Nocardia will show you beaded thin filaments. Nocardia is ubiquitous in the soil. Nocardiosis is riskier if you're immunocompromised. Signs and symptoms include cavitary lung lesions like abscess, brain abscess, kidney abscess, all kinds of abscesses. Treatment is TMP SMX. If you want to learn more about trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, and their sequential block, and other antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals, antiparasitic medications, download my antibiotics course of lectures at medicosisperfectionaries.com. 
I also have a toxicology course and a surgery high yield course, all at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.